15, Luke 15, and we've been talking about the Father um, there, <clears throat> and part of the thing that we we need to embrace is the view of the Father, and I think neither one of these sons had had uh, embraced that view. Um, and it really doesn't come out until the latter part of the story because I'll just put it like this, maybe no one ever asked. You know, no one just thought, you know, Father, what's on your heart? What are you thinking? What, you know, how do you see things? <clears throat> and, um, and the way that he sees things I believe that this story is trying to communicate is that um, the son is in us as born again sons, that we are born again and called sons of God, but it does not yet appear what we shall be until he appears. And the word appear there isn't the, the usual word for coming back in the air, but manifesting and being seen, understood enough to manifest. And because um, when we, what we do know is when he appears, we shall be like him. And um, so the, the father um, is the one who really, really can communicate his heart toward the son, toward his son, toward his eternal son. It's from the father that you will see the, the well, I mean, I, I remember a long time ago, I was reading uh, Colossians 1, and, um, and it says, you know, that we've been delivered from the power of tar darkness and translated into the kingdom of his dear son. That's the, the King James. But in the margin, it said, the son of his love. And that just, I mean, first of all, this is the way he's referring to Jesus. And second of all, that's where he put us. In the son of his love. Uh, and that so, so deeply affected me. I remember. And I, um, and, and I guess, in a sense, I was, through those scriptures, able to look into the face of the father and see how he felt about his son and if you, can, if you can make that leap, if you can really see that from the Father's heart, not from teaching, because we all know the Father loves his Son, and that, does, that doesn't mean anything as far as changing us by just knowing that information. What means something is, like in the story of the prodigal son, when, when the Son sees in the Father the ring that belongs to Jesus, as it were, and the robe that belongs to Jesus, and all of this stuff, and the, the fatted calf, and the, the sacrifice together, and the, the understanding being enlightened that this isn't just a regular sacrifice that the Father's done a million times, and oh yes, you know, Yahweh, or you know, whatever words we're gonna use to, to, to honor him, um, but rather he's seeing the sacrifice of the father's heart, the son that would give himself to such a degree and that he wants that son in us, that he wants that manifested in us to such a greater degree than, you know, nominal Christianity, to such a greater degree than New Creation Fellowship's grasp of that to such a greater degree than Randy Nussbaum's grasp of that. Come on, you know, you know, I just want to pursue. I don't want to assume, yes. you know, I don't want to assume I'm okay. I, you know, I don't want to be okay. You know, the process of this, yes. <laughs> you know, the process of this isn't that I be okay or that you be okay, right? Absolutely. The process of this is that we find him as he is not as we know him through teachings and books and, and all this stuff and, and it's all great. But, you know, in my opinion, 
knowing him in that way is exactly the same as anybody who knew him without going into the Holy of Holies. They called him God. They worshipped him as God, but they didn't know who they worshipped. They didn't know who they worshipped. And I think, this is just my, my dumb little opinion on this, but I think Paul kind of saw that uh, on Mars Hill when he started talking about, uh, oh, you've created a statue here to the unknown God. And, you know, and he, he quotes all these poets of the day and all this kind of stuff. And, and uh, I think on his way to Corinth, that it got him, or at least thinking about it, Corinth, it got to him what he had shared, and he starts going, that's where he says, I'm determined not to know anything but Christ and him crucified. You just go through that book. He just pounds the cross. He pounds Christ and him crucified, and he's just going, it's not about a poet and what he said, or it's an unknown God. Here's the God. Here, let him be revealed. It's Christ crucified. This is the God that we worship. Bam! You know, it's, it got him. Don't you want to be God? <laughs> I mean, you know, and uh, and uh, and it probably really it not only got him the truth. It probably messed with him the the approach he had on Mars Hill compared to everything else after that. It was just like immediately after that. He's just like going now. And this is look. I'm sorry. I ain't fooling around with this stuff anymore. And you know. Those guys said, well, this is interesting. We'll hear, of, we'll hear of this later. Paul's going, no, you ain't. I'm out of here. <laughs> you know, and, um, <clears throat> you know, um, people could say, well, Paul was just so radical and so strict because he laid down the cross so hard and, you know, heavy and all this kind of stuff. But he's the one God said, you, I want you to write the New Testament. This is what I, wanna, I want my people to hear. You know, and anyway, um, so uh, in verse 23, Luke 15, and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it. Bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. This is the progression of a, a son, a born again son recognizing the sacrifice and the offering as that which we're supposed to eat and we're supposed to fellowship with the Father over. We're supposed to make his heart glad. And I maybe next time we can get into that a little more because the Lord, the, the Holy Spirit really... Um, Open some things that just has deeply, deeply affected me. Um, but anyway, so the, so so once we, you know, once we are confronted with this, the Father's face and the way that He's acting, and then the the sacrifice and all of this stuff. Once His view is is received, not just our explanation of his view but his view is received then we have to embrace it and then our lives and our ministries and you know they're all supposed to be shaped by this view make it according to pattern what you just saw but in this case you don't see it in the mount you see it in the father's face <laughs> And ultimately, in truth, you see it in Jesus' face. And there's where you see the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. <clears throat> All right. So um, to, okay, so that really def gives definition to the word receive the Father's view and embrace it. Because when you're saying, well, what does? Um, our lives and our ministries and all of that being shaped according to that, that sacrifice and to that Father's heart. It's for the Father. Remember, that's what we read last time in, in John 8. He, he got it. 
he does always those play, those things that please the Father, and that meant, you know, when I'm lifted up, then you'll know. You know? You'll know me, and you'll know that the Father sent me for this. This is what you're supposed to know. This, this is prodigal son, get over here. Look at what we're doing here. Look at what we're, and not only the death, it's not just the death, but we're going to eat this thing, and this is going to be the thing that makes our heart merry. This, is, this will bring gladness to our hearts. And the other stuff of, you know, whatever, petting your flesh or whatever, that, that's, you know, that can make you temporarily feel good. Somebody, you know, could you pet just a little more? Oh, yeah. I love it. Um, but the father is the father's going to declare a son. I mean, of all the stuff, the father shows up at Jesus' baptism. Well, you know, father should show up at their, at their son's baptism. <laughs> but it's the first time he shows he shows up, you know, with the heavens opening. And he could have said anything. He could have, how about that Moses? Or, you know, any, any, any number of errors he goes to, he's got one thing on his mind. This is my beloved son. And I am pleased with this. I mean, you know, we could go, what, what you're not pleased with me? No. <laughs> You shouldn't have asked. This is my beloved son. That's what you're supposed to see. That's what heaven opens up for. That's when the father shows up. That's when you hear him speak. And it wasn't just, it wasn't just, I'm happy to see Jesus, you know, doing this. I'm glad that my son chose to be baptized. It isn't that. It's he's going to go all the way through this process and he's going to go to Calvary. The reason why he was born, the reason why he was incarnated, the reason why he got baptized, all a picture of the same thing. And he's going to take you down into the waters of that death in a real way. And when he comes up, you don't come up unless you're one with him inside of him lost in him, if you will, that are hid in him, hid, you know, instead of, you know, I mean, wouldn't that be weird if Jesus is walking along, we're his body, and then one member keeps popping out going, hey, hey, it's me, you know, you know, get back in there, you're supposed to be hid in me. Well, that happens all the time, it's weird. It's almost science fiction, that's not supposed to happen. We're supposed to be hid in him, not having my, this is Paul talking, not having mine own righteousness and my own mind. Let this mind be in you. Okay, I can't go with my mind. I'm sure nobody in this room goes with their own mind. I'm sure of it. No, I'm not that sure. <clears throat> But it's not, you know, it's not going with his brain or his thoughts. It's going with the mind of the crucified. Make yourself of no reputation. Get hid. Get hid. Well, I don't want to be that. Da, 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 da. You know what? Jesus, don't you remember examples of Jesus? And he's walking along and stuff. And then it says that he, would, he went somewhere and he would hide himself. And everybody showed up and he could not be hid. The point is the motivation that we don't want to put ourselves forward. But if you do that, if you seek to save, you're going to lose. You're going to be hid, but not in a good way. But if you lose for his sake, you know, it's like, who was it? Somebody was helping us when we were trying to get ready for Christmas, and we were dumping stuff left and right. And somebody said, where did all this junk come from? I said, well, Deb and I said one day we're going to start cleaning the house and we're going to give it away. So we gave it away. And when we gave it away, God said, when you give, you'll get more. So we got more junk back. So we gave that away. And he said, well, you'll get more. We got more junk back. 
And finally, at a certain juncture, I said, Deb, we're not giving anymore. We're either burning, trashing, or doing something else, but we are not giving. <laughs> I didn't see that sign. What was it? Okay, thank you. All right, so I wrote down, he declares, and he's done that to us. Come on, anybody say amen? He's declared. He declares... We receive his view of us in son, not in ourselves. Um, I put presenting his son is his responsibility. Embracing, loving with all is ours. Receiving, embracing, and loving with all your heart, soul, strength, mind, all, all. I mean, I just, you know. And then the, I put embracing with all, and then I, the last one is shaping our ministry is our responsibility. Make it according to pattern. Make the house look like the one that's in the Father's heart. Well, it'll never be that in and of ourselves. It's that in him. But we have to embrace in him. We have to embrace being hid. We have to embrace not trying to be something but to let him be. And then, you know, as I said, you give and you shall be given unto you. And then, of course, uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 and 10 says this. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. It's, his will is not going to be done by, by um, just wanting God's will to be done. Oh, I just want your will to be done. Oh, okay. Lord, I'm wrong in this area. I want your will to be done. He said, when the kingdom comes, his will is going to be done. The government of the nature of the Lamb, when it comes, the Father's will will be done. You don't have to plan it. And we, see, we thought his will was, well, marry this person and don't marry that person and live over here and do this and all that kind of stuff. And his will comes out of the government of the Lamb within us. And we find ourselves giving ourselves, loving, praying, covering, uh, doing a million things that nobody will ever see but the Father. Amen. And he's, he's pleased. Amen. But he's pleased with his son, not us. That's, that's right. You know, because it's his, it's his government. See, his government would say, uh, don't, you don't have to speak right now. You know, and inside you go, no, this is good. I need to speak. <laughs> you know, I'm telling you, this is, this is, this is a humdinger. <laughs> it's going to change the world. <laughs> I, I, I'm telling you, this, it's going to change the world right here if I, if I go ahead and spew this out on them. <laughs> and, and it's not. It's, it doesn't have any effect because there's too much of us in it. But then you go, you hold back. I've done this so many times I can't tell you. I would, I'll start all the way back to when I was first learning to even give words, same thing. The Lord gives you something to say, and I would choke up, and i go, and I wouldn't say it. And so I'm going, and then the, the, the moment and the time moves on, and you go, oh, oh, God. And somebody speaks up and they say the same thing. You go, oh, thank God, you know. I'm glad it got said because I thought I was going to explode because I didn't, I didn't say it or go to hell or something, you know what I mean, back then, you know. And then as you go on, you get to a place where you're, it's like, um, I've got this thing that I've, the Lord shared this with me and I've got to say it. And, the, you know, I just feel not by the leading of the Lord, no, don't say it at this time, but by the nature of the Lamb, don't, don't say it because you, you'll put yourself forward. 
That's what, you're, that's what your motive is behind it. Don't do it. And then sometimes nothing happens, and sometimes I've heard people say it, and it was so pure, I just went, <laughs> that's what I meant. I mean, but I was just messed up, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, what do we got again? Oh, Kelly, you got... <laughs> I think you're gonna no. Here's you're gonna have to do this a little more. <laughs> I don't know if I always get it. Are you calling me a big zero? Can you put a smiley face on that? <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna read this and then we'll stop. Thank you. <clears throat> in earth as it is in heaven. In earth as it is in heaven. In earth. That's what he wants. He doesn't want earth stuff to his glory. <laughs> Not. He wants in earth as it is in heaven. And then I wrote, the things we find that are resident in Jesus, we live on earth as it is in Jesus. We live on earth as it is in Jesus. Forming our ministry, forming what we do and say, forming um, all of the things that we have been have had placed in our hands forming it after the beauty and the glory of the father's heart and of and of his son but you see his son is in us and his son does always those things that please him if if we'll get out of the way instead of become stronger if we'll get out of the way instead of become wiser if we'll get out of the way instead of become uh, positionally somebody. Just let, let this mind be in you. Let the things that are true in him flow through you. You know, flow through you and just be a conduit of that sweet nature of Christ. Father, we just thank you for your, your preciousness in your heart you, when we get off and we get in the hog pen or, or and, and maybe even before that, we assumed we were doing right, we were taking your things and getting, you know, growing and all this stuff only to find ourselves in the hog pen. You're still looking at us from a far country. You're still looking in our direction. Your heart hadn't changed but your heart is fixed on the sun, the sun. And when we start approaching you in and, and, and preparedness, even if unknown that the hog pen has done so much to prepare us, if as we approach you, you rejoice because you know it's, it's your timing, the timing of the Father, the timing, the time of life. And so... Father, let us not rest on what we think we have that is so spiritual and makes us so special, but let us move with your spirit on the wings of the spirit now and, and, and afterwards and, and tomorrow. And let us, let us leave the old paths that we've made ruts in and can hardly get out of. And let us, let us be uh, uh, risen through the wings of the Spirit to be taken to places that we could never find. And no ruts can be made. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.